Welcome back, party people. My name is Daryl Wilson, and in case you guys have not heard, the new Google algorithm update is coming out next month that's going to directly affect everyone's SEO. Now, this is not your typical update where they care about your domain authority or your page authority, none of that. Google is strictly focusing on the page experience and the user experience users are having on your WordPress website. So today in this video, I'll go through some of these signals and explain to you what to look out for for this new update. It is coming out in May 2021, which is a month from now. So you do want to make sure that uh, you comply with a lot of these signals. I'll also talk about some websites uh, that have examples of what Google does not want. And I'll kind of touch base on that a little bit later in this video. So first things first, the largest contentful paint. So essentially what this means is a very large object, a very large piece of text. If you have something on your website that's taking your website a long time to load, fix it, optimize it, or just get rid of it. The largest contentful paint metrics renders the time of the largest image or text block. So anything big on your website, it has to go. It just has to go. So if you downloaded an image from unsplash.com and you did not optimize it, that would probably be a factor and that would probably be something that you might want to optimize. And it looks like right here, it's saying a good score, a good LCP score is around 2.5 seconds or less. So uh, what elements are considered? Obviously, it's gonna be some sort of image, maybe a video, something very large on your website. Uh, I run my website through DT Metrics, and mine is around 1.7 seconds. It's probably my background of my website. Uh, I think mine's like around 500 kilobytes, and that could be causing that. So you do wanna make sure that when you're adding things to your website, that you reduce it or optimize it or cut the fat, whatever you gotta do, but uh, yeah, so you do want to make sure that uh, the largest element on your website does not load more than 2.5 seconds. So keep that in mind. Next, we have the first input delay, which is very interesting. So this is solely going to measure the inactivity of users. And I think what's happening here is they want to see if users are actually going to your website and engaging. So are they going to the button? Are they clicking on something? And I think Google actually did this because I think what happened, I think what happened on the last update is users were having bots on their websites and that caused them to have a low bounce rate. So Google believed that, you know, oh, they're on their website, there's no the, the bounce rate's very low. So I believe they thought that was good content. And I think they're doing this now to saying, okay, are people actively going to the website and engaging in it? Are they doing stuff on it? And that's what Google wants to see. So they're looking for a tap, a click, or something that causes the browser to say, okay, let's let's start the process. We got someone on the website, let's, uh, let's entertain them. Now over here, we'll go ahead and click on this, the first input delay. They did give some examples here and they just wanna make sure that when users, again, they visit your website, they want them to be interactive with your website. So they just don't want them to sit there and, you know, and fall asleep. They wanna make sure that uh, your website is inviting or it's engaging or it's inviting them to do something. So just keep that in mind and a good way to, um, a good way to make them engage is again, having call to actions on your website. Just having call to actions, having somewhere where they can uh, easily click on something and go and you know something like that would be uh, ideal for this signal. The next signal is called the cumulative layout shift, which measures visual stability. Now, in short, this has to do with preventing anything that's annoying or unexpected movement of the page content. In fact, my website, I need to adjust it for this specific update. So this can be anything like animations that pop out. It can be a video player that starts playing right away when you visit the websites. It can be a pop-up that blocks your whole screen. It can be any one of those. Now, it's actually kind of hard to, to point your finger on, you know, what exactly it is, but Google does also give us a very good um, example. So cumulative layout shift. You guys can also test this score on DT metrics, but here we have an example. So just an annoying experience where they submitted an order, they're trying to go back and then whoops, it's like you just lost your money and now you have to process a refund. So they're just looking for, I guess you wanna say annoying experiences or shifts. So right here we have, what is CLS? So CLS measures the sum total of the individual layout shift scores for every unexpected layout shift that occurs during the lifespan of each page. A layout shift occurs anytime a visible element changes its position from one rendered frame to the next. Let's take a look at my website. So my website looks nice, right? But 
if I refresh this page, you're gonna see that uh, this is movement. It just doesn't need to happen. You know, it's animation that pops out and you know, I should probably just have normal text without all this JavaScript and CSS that causes movements on the page because it's just annoying. But uh, let's go ahead and keep scrolling down here. Uh, we also do have the, uh, they have something called impact fraction, which you guys can read about and distance fraction. But uh, in short here, they just, they give us a good analysis of it. So multiple unstable elements. So again, it's just something that unexpectedly shifts. So uh, a layout shift is only bad if the user is not expecting it. So if something just kind of moves around when they click on it, or if you click on a box and it causes something, that's just an example of a bad experience. So you do want to optimize your website for that. Now, I'm not necessarily sure if CSS or JavaScript uh, violates that. I'm not really sure uh, if this is uh, reducing my CLS score, but for my website benefits, I'm just going to take it off. You know, if you're going to ask me, does JavaScript and CSS on my homepage affect my SEO score for this update? I just don't know. You know, I really wish I, I had a better answer for you, but I will update. Uh, I will uh, tell you what, join my Facebook group. All right. And I'll change my website. I'll take off all of the JavaScript and then I'll let you guys know the score of my uh, websites and uh, see if that works out. But that is just something that you might want to focus on. So just try to reduce anything that's annoying. Try to make your website just more accessible, right? And they do have some tools on how you can monitor it. Now, the next one is mobile friendly, and this is no surprise, but they are just, uh, I guess you want to say they're increasing their percentage of your of their overall SEO score based off of mobile friendly websites. You guys can actually use their uh, mobile friendly tests. So just enter in your websites and if it passes, cool, it passes. Good. Next, we have safe browsing. So they just want to make sure that your website doesn't have any um, just have your SSL on guys and don't have any malware. You know, that's pretty much it. Just, uh, you want to make sure that uh, you don't have any malware. Also right here, it says deceptive using for social engineering content. Ooh. So I guess they're looking for, is your website a scam? You know, pretty much it. So just be very transparent about what your website is about. Don't leave any surprises. Don't leave anything that the user is just going to say, oh man, this is a scam. I have been to those websites where I visited something and then it turned out later just to be some huge uh, scam. So anything deceptive, anything weird, I uh, wish here they'd probably give us an example. So the site tricks users into revealing their personal information, deceptive content, insufficient labeling third-party services. So again, guys, just try to be as transparent as possible. Try not to be deceptive and you guys should be all fine and dandy. Uh, next, have your HTTPS, all right? So uh, make sure you have your HTTPS and if you don't have it on, Google is going to say that your website is dangerous. Do they still want to proceed? So you can avoid all of that by just having an SSL on your website. So you guys can see my SSL is there. Users can see it's secured and it doesn't tell people that my website is a scam or scary or whatever. And lastly, we have something that's actually very, very interesting. So the content on the page is easily accessible to the user. Now, if you guys ever been into a website and they just kind of blocked the whole website and wanted you to click on this ad, this is an example. So this website has to get rid of this because if I use the mouse scroll, I can no longer use this. It looks like Optin Monster made this and they might have to make some serious changes to their products for, uh, you know, because of this update. Now, I don't know for certain if this is going to hurt the website SEO, but if Google's telling me to get it off my website, I'm just gonna get it off. I'm not gonna sit there and take risks and just have it on my site, but they give us examples. So uh, examples of pop-ups that make content less accessible. So we have this pop-up which blocks the whole website. Um, it has it again. And I've actually seen, I've seen ads like this where they actually block the whole page and you have to actually close it. In fact, I think Neil Patel's website had that at one point and I think they took it off but I have seen this on other websites. I'm not sure where I've seen it, but I have seen it before, uh, except they do give examples of pop-ups that are acceptable. Like for example, cookies. So, you know, they have to accept uh, GDPR compliance or they have to, you know, enable cookies on their websites. Also age verification. So if there's an adult websites, uh, they have to verify the age. So that pop-up is okay. And then uh, an example of a banner that uses reasonable amount of screen space. Uh, so you might have those pop-ups on the top, you know, where it kind of sits on the top or the bottom. 
and that's okay. In fact, I think actually search engine watch.com uses that. So we have this sign up to the newsletter here at the bottom, and that's an example of good practice. So um, that would basically, that'd be okay for them. So they wouldn't get penalized and nothing else. So that is pretty much it for the new Google algorithm updates. Now remember it is coming out May, 2021, which is next month. You guys do need more help. You guys can go to dtmetrics.com and you guys can actually run your website through it and then actually check the performance tab. So this is where you're gonna get a lot of the information where you can oversee your performance metrics, like your largest contentful paints, your cumulative layout shift and all of this uh, stuff. I myself need to make some small changes to my website. You guys can also go to, I believe they have another tool under the website we visited, the web.dev. And they do have some tools that you guys can use on their website. If you guys go to their homepage here, uh, you guys can click on test my site and you guys can test your website and it'll give you a score based off your performance, accessibility practices and SEO. You guys can also go to Pingdom, but Pingdom's just gonna tell you about your load time and your page size. So even though I have good load time, I do need to work on my uh, on-page optimization for this specific update. So if you guys do have any questions for me, feel free to let me know in the description below. It's a very interesting update. If you guys, uh, if I miss anything, let me know in the comments below. My name is Daryl Wilson and I will see all of you party people in the next video, guys. Take care.